here's Chris from Conan. And Chris, I think you have a demo about Conan. Yes, I do. I have a few slides and a quick demo. So I'm going to yes. share my screen for everybody. That's what I'm after. Um, yeah, so Conan 2.0 has been released in February, I think. And it's been long awaited. And it's great to have it. Um, so let's see what Chris has to say about Conan 2.0 and Conan in general. Let's go. So uh, just a quick introduction to Conan 2.0 for the tool fair here today. Um, my name is Chris MacArthur. I'm the Conan developer advocate. Uh, if you're on any of our social medias, you'll definitely find me. We're in a bunch of different places like the CPP Alliance slang, uh, the hashtag include discord. Uh, you can follow us and keep up to date with all the different releases that are going on. So one of the first questions I always get is what is Conan? So uh, it's a C and C++ package manager. And the role of this is really easy. Uh, it's just to simply install dependencies. We've all had that frustration of, I'd like to try out a new project, uh, but the building three or four different projects, putting and installing them all in the right place, configuring the system, it's quite a hassle at times. And being able to just quickly develop and prototype things is one of the most convenient features of a package manager. So the distinction between Conan and a lot of the other package managers is it focuses on building and distributing the binaries. So uh, when you're talking about things like ABI compatibility, binary compatibility between different versions, being able to model that, track that, and make decisions around it is where uh, Conan's strengths really lie. So um, we have JFrog's Conan Center. Uh, I've been contributing to that for several years now. There's over 1,500 open source projects, and it's built in over 100 configurations. So you can see this in the demo very soon, but I'll show you that you can quickly just install the dependencies needed. So Conan is open source. It's MIT licensed. Uh, it's a distributed model, so there's one client to many servers. It's scalable and flexible, uh, so you can have different combinations of remotes and servers working combination. It supports all the major build systems, so CMake, Meson, Autotools, um, any platform, uh, Windows, Linux, iOS, Android, your heart's content, embedded devices as well. And it's more than just CMake, list.txt. So uh, being a Python package manager it really gives you some flexibility so you can do more things uh, and more completely. So uh, let's say we just have a, a simple consumer example, right? So I want to make an app, and it's going to be version 1.0 because I'm real fancy. Uh, you can just make a cone file.txt. Uh, you don't really need to get into the Python, and it's a very easy syntax. Requires speed log 1.11.0. We're going to be using some generators. This is a Conan's language for the integrations for build systems. So you can see here we're going to use CMake toolchain and CMake depths. And our layout for this project is going to be CMake because it's a CMake project. So we can just git clone our app. We could CD into the repository and do a Conan install. And that's like the easiest way to get going. But the secret here is the dependency graph. So what you didn't see in the previous slide was this dependency on FMT, so the format library. So my app is going to have a direct requirement to speed log. But that speed log is going to have a recipe, and it's going to have a requirement to FMT. And that transitive dependency is carried through the Conan model graph. And being able to make these distinctions and understand these things, uh, we get to do fun things like having requirement traits. So we know whether or not the header libraries are exposed, whether you need the symbols to link against, uh, whether it's a DLL that needs to be copied at runtime. You can make more informed decisions when you're uh, building and deploying your app, and you can do some fun optimizations in that. So I mentioned a recipe. So our app here is going to have one. Uh, we're going to use Conan to build and distribute it, because that's the next step. We figured out how to install our dependencies, but we need a recipe for how do we build and package this. So we're going to make an app, and it's going to have a binary, and it's going to have a Conan file. And there's going to be a source method, a build method, and a package method. And uh, this works just the same where you clone your repository. And instead of doing Conan install, we're going to do Conan create. So fun little demo. I have here a terminal. We're already in our app directory. So if I just do uh, ls minus la, you can see minus the bad text coloring, there are a few directories going on. So 
we have a source folder here as well as the test package. And we can see here our conefile.py. So if I cat that conan file, you can see here we have a handful of things. Um, I cheated and just used one of our nifty little um, commands in Conan. So if you do Conan new, you can actually just generate yourself an example recipe, which is what I did right here. Um, and you can see here we have our layout, which should match what you saw previously in the uh, Conan file.txt. Most of these things translate over. We have our requirements generate, build, and package. So these are the different methods that Conan can invoke. And this is how you teach it to uh, build and package your software. You can see here for our binary configuration, uh, our settings are operating system, compiler, and build type the architecture. And this is just how you describe things. There's some uh, fun fill-ins so you can do your metadata. And here we're going to be making an application. So easily laid out. So if I go back to my cheat sheet and I steal my command, I can run this here. So I'm going to compile this with C++14. And you can see Conan will go through and work, and it'll build our app. So our graph here, you'll notice it's going with our app, and it was exported, so it was in our cache. And you can see our dependencies here. We have a speed log and FMT. So our version range here. So I need version of speed log, anything greater than 1.10. And it resolved that and it found the latest and it turns out it was 1.11. Uh, compatibility. So depending on your C++ standard, you can get different binaries. The default compatibility in Conan 2.0 is very easy. It accepts any CPP SDD, which is generally what you would expect most of the time, that most of them should be compatible. Um, it is a plugin, so you can change and customize it however you like. Um, here you can see our requirements. These are the different binary packages that it resolved to and found. And it generated our files for us. And this created our package. So uh, the introduction section to the new Conan 2.0 docs is going to be your best friend. Uh, it's a narrative story, so similar to how we saw from Sloban for his book where there's like real code examples. All of that is here present with Conan as well. Uh, it makes it very easy to get hands-on and try it. Um, so why would you pick Conan over the other ones? And I touched about this a little bit earlier, but uh, its focus on being able to package and distribute software is one of the key aspects of it. And it also gives you that flexibility so you can build a framework for doing DevOps. DevOps isn't really something we talk a lot about in the C++ ecosystem, but um, spoiler alert, you've been probably doing it this whole time with building and saving packages somewhere. Those binaries, if you build and debug and release or different compilers and platforms, you've already been doing DevOps. So Conan just gives you more tools to manage that and do it better. Uh, and you can do things like model modeling the platform configurations and language between libraries, which is very convenient. What's new in Conan 2.0? Uh, quite literally everything. So there's been five years without a breaking change. Uh, and that commitment to stability uh, is still true with Conan 2.0. So about 60% of the code base is new and about 20% is backports. But the example I just showed you is completely compatible with Conan 1.x as well. So you can do the latest in Conan 1.x and then plan your migration over to 2.0. And this uh, was done intentionally and the design was really thoughtful behind this. So uh, this is a slide just to show all the different changes. Um, on the left-hand side, you can see a list of different breaking changes. These are more uh, structural changes to how the client works. And on the right-hand side, you can see a whole long list of new features. Um, and this will give you a, a good overview of like what to expect. I mentioned the plugins. Um, in Diego's CPP con talk, he used the expression death by a thousand bytes, and that is absolutely truth. Uh, so one of the changes in Conan 2.0 is you have the power to help yourself. Uh, there's a profile checker, command wrapper, and package signing, to name a few. And this will really make it easier for people to try things out. Uh, so new graph model, new plugins, extensions, deployers, binary compatibility, um, things I didn't mention, multi-revision cache, 
Uh, there's new package ID modes. There's lock files, got a huge revamp, which is super good. Configurations environments got an overhaul, package immutability, and so much more. Uh, there's a page on the docs, what's new, and you can learn all about it there. Some more resources if you're curious. Uh, there's an ACCU talk by Diego a, a year ago now. Uh, we did an introduction to 2.0 blog as well, uh, the tutorial, which I mentioned. If you have questions, uh, the official place to get help is the Conan issues on our GitHub repo. Uh, if you want community help, I highly recommend our CP Alliance Slack channel. Uh, it's one of the most active in the C++ ecosystem, and it'll definitely give you a good overview, and people are definitely helpful. So, And if you want updates, Twitter. Uh, I run the Twitter. I do make typos. You can make fun of me. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, pip install Conan. That's it. Easy peasies. Thank you, Chris. That was a nice short demo. And um, more about Conan on the table. And so... Need to go on my slides again. And um, thanks, Conan.